On today's video, Chiefs cut cornerback and special teams contributor. Cincinnati safeties give the Chiefs some bulletin board material, and we're going to take a look at Mahomes' ankle. Stick around. What's happening, Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome back to All Chiefed Up. It looks like your Kansas City Chiefs have cut a cornerback and a special teams contributor. Mike, you want to talk about it? Yeah, we cut Chris Lamonts today. You know him because he is a good special teams contributor. Uh, this guy covers well. This guy tackles well. Uh, he does a lot of good things. He even had an interception there in the final preseason game. So he is capable of covering very well. But uh, it looks like we're opening up something. Uh, it looks like maybe they want to bring back uh, Clyde or Fortson. What do you think? I think that's probably why they're making that move. But does it not concern you a little bit that the special teams have been really bad all season? They didn't even look good in this past game against the Jaguars. And now they've cut maybe their best special teamer. Possibly. Maybe they see something on film. Maybe LeMond's was the reason this guy broke that out. I haven't really studied special teams too well. Uh, maybe he messed up. I'm going to trust the team. They've been making the calls at this point. So it is what it is, but uh, yeah, it, it might be good to get Fortson back or Clyde. I would say Fortson probably before Clyde at this point, though, I would think with the nature of the injuries. So Bengals safety Jesse M. Bates has already provided some bulletin board material for the Chiefs this week after saying that he hopes Patrick Mahomes is 100% because he don't want any excuses after they beat the Chiefs again. Uh, so what's the M stand for? Master. Okay, so Master Bates says that he hopes that Mahomes is – completely healthy he don't want excuses who says my homes gives excuses anyways um i'm kind of seeing a trend here this is a rivalry starting to build over i mean it's not really a rivalry we haven't beat them but it's it's kind of a rivalry and what is the deal with these safeties talking last time it was justin reed giving some bullet to board material now jesse bates does it again when is i get the Bengals feel slighted a little bit and rightfully so i believe that the game against the bills should have been at an alternate site the same way as possibly a bills chiefs matchup um right. i do believe they got jobbed a little bit with the playoff seating and who they played and all that stuff as well but at the same time when does us versus the world that's a good mentality to have but when does that come off as just pure arrogance and cockiness and these guys aren't holding back anymore. Like you can go from Mixon to Burrow to now Jesse Bates and their coach is actually showing up in press conferences and they're all talking about, you know, refund the tickets. Like nobody ever sells tickets to games. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, there was already tickets being sold to a, a Bengals AFC championship game before they even played that. So, I mean, same difference. They're just looking for something to talk about. And my thing is, is like you said, if it's Bengals versus the world and we got slided a little bit and everything like that, I completely understand it. But when you already, the minute you win your game, start taking shots at the other team, like you're just acting like an idiot. Like, I feel like that's why everyone hates Bengals fans because they are the same way as the players. It's like the precedent is set by the players like Eli Apple, Jesse Bates, all of them. And they just can't shut up. Like, OK, cool. You're better than you used to be. We know that the Bengals used to be a poverty franchise like three years ago and you have to de you've dealt with it for years. We were in the same situation with Kansas City. But handle it with some grace, for the love of God. Like, have a little bit of humility. They have none. They're very cocky. They're very annoying. Like, I don't know how else to say it. They just, they need to chill a little bit. Yeah, it's just chill. It's like, uh, congrats. You guys are good. Uh, you played good. You're the odds on betting favorite for this game. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But you guys are good. We get it. We haven't beat you in three straight games. I get it. Um, but there has to be a little humility here. You can't come into every game with that chip on your shoulder like acting like you're not getting respect like you're finally getting respect but at the same time you also got to put some respect on the chiefs patrick mahomes five straight afc championship appearances we have two super bowl appearances yes you guys are here for the second time in a row and are playing to go to maybe your second straight super bowl but you got to win one first you actually got to do something you know what i'm saying like i get it i understand we've we've took a lot of hardships with the chiefs over the years but uh gotta chill gotta chill yeah, so confidence is cool and all, but you have to realize in these three games, they only won by a slim margin of like three points in each game, I believe. And also, Kansas City had this last game in hand. If it wasn't for that Travis Kelsey fumble, this game was a wrap. So, I mean, to have confidence is one thing, but to run completely crazy with the Bengals own the Chiefs narrative, I think that's pushing it a little too far. Yeah, so let's get into the Cincinnati betting line. Vegas now has flipped. Kansas City started, I want to say, at a 2.5-point favorite. Um, now Cincinnati is up by one. One-point favorite at Arrowhead. Do you think that's fair, Steve? Is Cincinnati the favorite? Honestly, I think that's a bad move by Vegas, in my opinion. It'll probably move throughout the week. I'm sure it always does. 
Uh, Cincinnati does look like the stronger team at this point, but the Chiefs have the best record in the league. They're the one seed and they're at home. So to make them the underdog, you're just fueling the fire along with uh, Jesse M. Bates. Yeah, well, betting also sways the the line here and there. So a lot of people probably are taking Burrow. Burrow and them are more healthy. Uh, Mahomes' injury, obviously, is a big reason this line is shifting. Um, but we did get some good news today. Uh, Andy Reid comes out and said that the ankle doesn't initially look as bad as it did the first time Patrick Mahomes sprained it versus the Jaguars. And I don't remember his stats that game, but what did he do after that one, Steve? Yeah, the next week, Mahomes played the Raiders, and he went for 443 yards, four touchdowns, and zero picks. So it didn't look like that ankle bothered him all that much that game against the Raiders. Granted, the Raiders any year versus the Bengals this year are not comparable, but at the same time, it just goes to show you that Mahomes was still able to get out there and be highly effective. Right. He's going to play. He's going to play. He's a tough kid. He didn't want to come out of the game last time, but we do have to be real. This is still a high ankle sprain. Nobody's making excuses, but you have a star quarterback on one good leg. It's it's that simple. Um, It's not going to be perfect. No matter how much we wish and, and will him to be there, it's not going to be. He's going to be a little less than 100% or a lot less than 100%. Who knows? But I'm kind of wondering what this is going to do for his game. I honestly think it could help his game, to be honest, because why? Now he has to sit in the pocket a little bit. Maybe he has to start focusing on his mechanics more. Maybe he don't get to get out outside of the pocket and cause extra pressures and this and that. I get it. That's the Mahomes magic. But Patrick Mahomes is lethal in the pocket, too. And if you can get him to sit in there and Andy Reid and them can adjust the play calling to help him do that, not to mention our offensive line, they want to protect Mahomes now. I think uh, Orlando Brown even come out and said that the other day. They said, look, they just got together and was like, look, we got to protect our guy. And it made him block better. So I do think all around this could help us a little bit. Yeah, a big day from the offensive line and a heavy dose of Isaiah Pacheco. And it could be a long day for the Bengals real quick. Uh, Orlando Brown saying that. Doesn't hold a lot of weight because he was the guy that was famous for saying no one's going to touch Patrick Mahomes after he signed with the Chiefs, and he struggled the first half of the year. But I do think the team really came together with Patrick Mahomes being ailed with his ankle, and like everyone stepped it up a notch. Everybody stepped it up a notch on both sides of the ball and took care of what they had to take care of, and it was a total team win. And it's going to take a total team win to take down this hot Bengals team. Speaking of total team wins, the Chiefs taking down the Jaguars in the divisional round was just that. We talked about it right here in this video. Make sure to watch that. Get in the comments. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And hit the bell. And we'll be back tomorrow with more on your Kansas City Chiefs. Go Chiefs.